Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. So uh, <coughs> we finished our Maxitronics 10-in-1, uh, <coughs> uh, and now we're going to continue with the uh, Maxitronics Sensor Robot 20. So uh, this is it, the uh, Sensor Robot 20, Action Science Electronic Project Lab. Uh, safe, solderless, exciting, educational, and fun. Easy to read, illustrated, operating manual included. All in one, 20 electronic project experiments. Learn as you perform 20 exciting experiments involving light, magnetism, sound, and touch. Great introduction to the world of advanced electronics. Spring coil connections make it safe and easy for operation. Learn and build your own sensor robot safely and easily. Quick, easy, safe, and fun to learn the basics of electronics. No tools or soldering required. There you go. So let's uh, let's let's pop the box open and see, see what's inside. Uh, there we go on the bench. So take the lid off this guy. All right. There's the uh, the owner's manual. We'll have a good look at that soon. I'm not sure what was in this bag, but it seems to have come out. I don't think we're going to need that. So, bin that. This. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's some sort of a magnet. Maybe some sort of a sensor. I'm not sure. Uh, we seem to have. Oh no! It looks like. Okay, I'm not entirely sure what we're looking at here. There's a uh, a bit of plastic. I'm not sure where that goes. Uh, this is uh, looks like some sort of a touch touchpad signal. Uh, there's something wrapped up here. I wonder what's in there. We'll have a look at that soon. All right. Uh, here's a bunch of wire. Okay. So it's um it's it's not solid core wire, uh, but it is tinned. It's well tinned on each end. This is uh, a couple of longer pieces. Okay. And there's more down here. Okay. This is some some shorter wire. And This is the project board. So at the back here, we've got our battery. Now there must be, uh, yes, I see. There's a, a clip on the bottom here uh, for a nine volt for a nine volt battery. So that'll be a nine volt supply. Of course, we'll use our uh, our own power supply. We won't be using the battery. Uh, so the power terminal's up here. Now um, this is some sort of. Oh, uh, there's a switch, and a. Uh, okay. So, oh, I see. All right, this is the control. It's up here. So it, it's it includes a switch, and it includes a a a, 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 a variable uh, resistor. Uh, the piezo buzzer. Where is that? I think that's probably in here. Uh, then there's a reed switch. Now, where is the reed switch? This is the reed switch. There you go. And then here, integrated circuit. Okay, I wonder what sort of an integrated circuit it is. Uh, it looks like an, an that my guess is that it's an uh, amplifier. Yeah, I think it is an amplifier. Cool. Uh, then there's a couple of resistors, a couple of transistors, more resistors, more transistors. These are, uh, I think they're all NPNs. Yep, more transistors over here. Ah, multi-vibrator block one and multi-vibrator block two. Bunch of capacitors. This one has some electrolytes. The 10 in one didn't have any electrolytic capacitors. It just had two ceramics. Um, and more transistors over here. Whole bank of resistors. Uh, there's two LEDs, one, two. Uh, there's a CDS cell, which is here. That's the light sensor. We've got a touch panel. Uh, oh, I see. I see. So, uh, the, the, the touch sensor goes here and wires in here, I believe. And then uh, this must be the crystal microphone. Yes, I see. So uh, let's let's pop out the, uh, the crystal microphone and just have a look at that. So it's basically... Uh, I think it's just basically one of those little piezo jobbies. So, uh, okay, great. And uh, and that's everything. Touch panel. Oh, where's the key? Here's the key. Here's the key. There's the CDS. And then the crystal mic goes in here. So um, let's uh, take the... Uh, oh, actually, so what, what, what was this? 
Uh, did we figure that out? I don't know where that goes. I don't, I don't know the purpose of this piece of stuff. And there's something in here that we uh, don't know about yet. Let's see if we can get in there. Hmm. There's something in there. What is it? Oh, it's magnets. Yes, I think that's magnets. Cool. Yep, that's magnets. So presumably they uh, affect the uh, the read switch. Yeah, okay. So uh, we'll keep our magnets uh, over here. Uh, Alright, we might as well undo this guy. This is the, uh, the touch panel. They're calling it the touch panel. So obviously you press that on. I don't know if it's capacitive or, uh, or resistive. I don't know. Anyway, this is it. Now, when I, um, the Sensor Robot 20 Electronic Project Lab, um, I see. So, uh, when they say robot, there is actually no robotics here at all. It's just this thing. It's, it's like a robot. It's not actually a robot, is it? So, um, Okay, that's good. I'm actually happy about that. I was a little bit concerned that it was going to be all mechanical and, you know, you'd turn on motors and gizmos and stuff. Um, but I'm happier with it being just a, a sort of a, um, a more passive electronics kind of thing. So that's great. Um, we've got our, our, our bits and pieces now. We might as well just have a quick flip through the manual and see what we'll be making. So let's, uh, let's have a look here. This is the Sensor Robot 20. I think all of the same... Uh, <coughs> all of the same information on the front of the book as on the front of the box. So, introduction. Welcome to the wonderful world of electronics. You are about to journey through this world guided by your Sensor Robot 20. You are going to assemble 20 different projects, each giving you exposure to a different principle of electronics. The Sensor Robot is your lab. The robot has a sensor that detects changes in light. It has one that detects the change in sound levels and another that knows whether it's raining. There is another that can detect the presence of magnetism or magnetic materials. With the robot, you can perform electronic magic, become a sharp shooter with a beam of light, <clears throat> know by remote control whether your bathtub is filled up with the right amount of water, and much more. The robot has also has electronic devices built in that let you know that one of the sensors has detected something. As you assemble each project, take the time to familiarize yourself with how the project operates. When you finish all 20 projects, you will be an expert using the various sensors that are part of your sensor robot kit. Before you begin, one, lift the panel and locate the battery holder beneath. Install the 9 volt battery in the holder. Be sure to match the markings on the battery terminals to the snap-on connector, as shown in the illustration. When you are not using your sensor robot kit, remove the battery from the connector and holder. Meet your sensor robot. The Sensor Robot Project Lab Kit consists of a panel with factory installed electronic parts in it. The panel is divided into sections. Each section is a different color so that you can follow more easily how the project operates. In each section there are numbered <coughs> silver springs attached to the panel. For each project you connect these numbered springs using supplied pieces of wire. Each project has a wiring sequence that, when completed, forms an electronic circuit. This guide describes each project, explains how the project works and shows you how to wire the circuit to complete the project. Meet the parts of your kit. Look at the panel of your Sensor Robot. Notice all the various parts on the circuit panel. There are four different sensors that react to different forms of energy, such as light, magnetism, and sound. The robot has two communication devices to tell you of the presence of such signals. The robot's eyes are light-emitting diodes that flash. The robot's mouth is a piezo buzzer. You operate a special type of volume control and a separate switch to complete certain projects. Now let's meet the various other electronic parts that make up your sensor robot. CDS cell. This sensor is located in the middle of your robot's chest. CDS is a chemical abbreviation for cadmium sulfide, a substance that, when exposed to light, changes its resistance to the conduction of electricity. <coughs> the circuit you build takes advantage of the cell's ability to change its value with different light levels. Microphone. This sensor is not mounted on the panel. The microphone wires connect to marked places on the circuit panel. The microphone is sensitive to sound. Read switch. This sensor is located in your robot's right foot. The wires inside the glass capsule respond to a magnet held nearby. Because the wires are enclosed in glass, they are protected from dirt, water, and mishandling. Touch switch. This board, made of copper strips spaced together, reacts when water touches its surface. Light emitting diode. 
converts electricity directly into light. When you provide a voltage to this device, electrons within the material of the diode become highly active. When the electrons cross a barrier created in the diode substance, they emit photons and you see, uh, that you see as light. For convenience, the name is abbreviated LED. Piezo buzzer. This component makes noise when electricity flows through it. A piezo buzzer has no moving parts. It generates its sound because of the action of electricity on its chemical components. Key switch. When you press this switch, electri electricity flows through the contacts. Control and power switch. This component consists of two parts, a variable resistor and an on-off switch. The variable resistor regulates the flow of electricity much like a water faucet controls the flow of water. The switch is built into the control so that you can easily turn the electricity on and off. Resistors. These tubular objects are made from carbon, which is also used in a typical lead pencil. Resistors restrict the flow of electricity. The higher the resistance, measured in ohms, the greater the re restriction of the electrons. Transistors. These devices are known as semiconductors. A very small current or voltage at one of the three leads can control a much larger current flowing through the other two leads. This means that transistors can be used as amplifiers or switches. Transistors have three parts, a base, an emitter, and a collector. The base acts as an electronic gate, letting the transistor operate more fully or less fully. Capacitors. These devices act as electronic jars. The circuit stores electricity in them. Capacitors are charged and discharged. The farad is the unit of capacitance. However, a farad is very large. Most capacitors used in solid state electronics are measured in microfarads, abbreviated UF. Diode. This part acts as a one-way street for electricity. It allows the current to flow only in one direction. Integrated circuit. This chip is made of many hundreds of super miniature circuits. Each circuit has its own transistors, wires, resistors, and capacitors. Additional terms are used throughout this guide. Some of them are square wave voltage, a voltage that rises and falls at a certain rate or frequency. A stable multivibrator, a special circuit that generates a square wave. The frequency is varied by the circuit. Killer ohms, thousands of ohms, a unit of resistance, abbreviated K ohms. How to read the wiring sequences. You connect wires from a numbered spring to another numbered spring to build each project. The springs are contacts for the electronic parts. The entire connected project is called circuit. For each project, the wiring sequence is presented in the following format. When you see 1-3 in the wiring sequence sequ box, insert one end of the wire beneath spring 1, then insert the other end of the wire beneath spring 3. If you see 2-4-5-34-38-42-48, connect a wire from spring Two to spring 5, then connect a wire from spring 5 to spring 34. Next, connect another wire from spring 34 to spring 38. Continue connecting springs in this manner until finished. <clears throat> Always be sure that the material of the wire is making contact with the metal of the spring, otherwise the projects in this manual cannot operate. It is important that you make the connections in the order given to prevent any damage to components. When you complete the wiring sequence, you will have finished your first project. Copyright 2001, Maxitronics Enterprise Limited. Maxitronics Lab is registered trademark of Maxitronics Enterprise Limited. And here's our 20 projects. Brightness alarm, darkness alarm, electronic candles, light alarm with latch, light controlled organ, photo photometer, shot in the dark, shot in the dark two, visitor alarm, speech conductor, burglar alarm, magnetism detector, ferromagnetic substance detector, non-touch switch, glass organ, high water indicator, low water indicator, rain detector, touch buzzer, weather indicator. There we go. And then uh, then we're on to the details of, uh, of, of the projects. There's project one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now we've got, oh, we've got a warning. Here we go. Uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Wow, it gets really sophisticated. But look at that, though. Look at that circuit. That's quite involved. And there's some space for notes in the back, and there's a parts list. Might as well have a look at our parts list. Note, most of these parts are already mounted on the platform inside the box. This parts list will just serve to remind you what parts are made up, what parts make up your lab kit. Bar magnet, two. So we've got our two bar magnets. We know about those. That's that's these guys over here. Um, then we've got a uh, battery holder for the 9-volt battery, battery snap for the 9-volt battery, box for microphone, box for touchboard, CDS cell, CDS pipe. Ah, oh, that's what this is. Yes, there we go. The CDS pipe. That makes sense now. Oh, I'll uh, have a look at that. So this is the, uh, the CDS pipe that it's talking about. So you can cover up the, uh, the CDS cell. 
Yes, yeah, so there you go. All right. Well, that explains that. <sighs> capacitors. So there's three ceramic capacitors, 0.047 microfarads. We've got one microfarad electrolytic. We've got a 10 microfarad electrolytic. In fact, there's two 10 microfarad electrolytics, and there's a 47 microfarad electrolytic. There's a microphone with cord. There's a diode. Frames. I'm not sure what the frames refers to. Holder for buzzer, plastic, integrated circuit, key lever, knob for key, knob for variable resistor, label for control knob, two red LEDs, two terminal knobs black, two terminal knobs red, paper panel, piezo, electric buzzer, printed circuit board, <coughs> magnetic read switch resistors, five 1K ohms, 1.8K ohms, 3.9K ohms, four 10K ohms, two 33K ohms, 47K ohm, 100K ohm, and the biggest resistor that we've got is a 470K ohm, which is the same as we had in the 10 in one project. There's a bunch of screws holding the stuff together, and uh, uh, spring terminals, there's 76 spring terminals, there's a touch board with cord, there's transistors, there's six transistors, there are two SC945, so all the transistors are the same, there's six NPN transistors, there's a variable resistor with spit switch, it's a 50k variable resistor, and then there's a bunch of wires, so um, there's, uh, there's the wires there, I suppose we might as well use them, mightn't we? Um, I'll, uh, I'll put them on the mat over there, we can use the wires that came with this kit. Uh, of course, I've got a whole bunch of other wires, so there's options there. And that's everything. On the back, it says, The experiments in this kit are designed to comply with FCC, FCC rules as long as you follow the instructions and use only the components and materials supplied with this kit. Maxitronics, Maxitronics Enterprise Limited on uh, Fujian Street in Taipei, Taiwan. Telephone, fax, couple of email addresses. Homepage was at maxitronics.com. That, that's not there anymore. Printed in China. Copyright 2001. Wonderful. And then, there's a warning. Warning, for children over 10 years of age under adult supervision, before you connect the batteries, always verify your circuit connections. Recheck your battery polarities, and if the circuit does not work, immediately disconnect the batteries and follow steps for troubleshooting. When connecting electrolytic capacitors, be sure to observe the correct polarity. Incorrect connection could cause damage or injury. Do not use rechargeable batteries in the kit. The project kit may be suitable for circuits other than the ones shown in the owner's manual. However, it would not be advisable to experiment or invent a circuit without due regard for safety. We recommend you have every experiment checked by suitable suitable, qualified, or competent adult to avoid danger or damage to the components. Fair enough. So that's it. That concludes our introduction. Um, so, yeah, that's the, uh, the, the Sensor Robot 20. It's, uh, it's not actually a robot. There's no actual actuators or hydraulics or motors or fans or nothing like it. There's, uh, there's just a picture of the, of the robot and the LED are his, li uh, are his eyes and he's, he's got hands and feet and such. So... Um, that looks pretty cool. The, the, um, the, the circuits look like they, they get kind of sophisticated. The last one certainly seemed very sophisticated. Um, so I look forward to, uh, to working through this with you. If you'd like to see uh, the next project, uh, don't forget to hit subscribe and we'll start working our way through the Sensor Robot 20 very soon.